Shalom to the Lord select. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, again, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, call Allah Yahweh. Bahashem Yahawashai Bahashem Rukakodash. Let's give double honors to our head apostles, the elders, the bishops from the great millstone that taught us this truth. Again, they deserve double honors. Some of our leaders, particularly the head apostle family, day in and day out. They continue to feed us with this glorious gospel. They continue to teach us and lead us. And we are extremely grateful for what the Lord has done in these last days for his elect. I got a little emotional this morning reading the headline news from last night to this morning to know that we are at the end of our captivity. And the Lord raised these men to lead us and guide us and bring us back to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai family. This is not something that you should take lightly. You have to appreciate what we have. We have the truth. We have the gospel. We have what? This, this word here is going to lead to our salvation. Our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is about to do something that has never, ever happened before. Nobody has seen people being beamed up into ships their bodies changing, family. That has never happened before, but the Lord has given us hope. We are prisoners of hope. That's right. We are prisoners of hope. And the Lord is going to come through for us big time. It says, eyes have not seen or ears have not heard what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. It says the current suffering of this world cannot be compared to the glory the Lord is about to reveal in this. Roughly paraphrasing. That is why, family, I am so excited. Yeah, I may not sound like I'm excited, but, you know, I'm thankful and I hope you are too. To be called to, that's right, the marriage supper of the Lamb, Yahweh Shai, is coming. Again, double honors to our head apostles, the elders, the bishop from the great millstone that taught us this truth. And salutation, peace to my fellow laborers, the men out there on the highways, byways, sit downs, and doing the will of our King, our Redeemer, our Shai. Your reward is coming. The large multitude, men, women, children, taking heed, believing in the gospel of our King, our Redeemer which is the spirit of our prophecy. I pray this word will find you in perfect peace as we all patiently wait for the second coming of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. I'm going to open it up with a precept here. Baruch chapter 4, verse 21. It says, Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of what? The enemies. And who are our, our number, number one enemy? Esau, Edom, self-proclaimed white man today. He has many names that he go by. Every now and then he will switch it up. He will refer to himself as Caucasian, European, that's right, German, American, Canadian, British. But their biblical name is what? They are the Edomite, the wicked, mentioned in the Bible. Satan, they come in the spirit of Satan. But let's continue. He said, for my hope is in the everlasting. That's our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukakudash, that he will save you. His name simply means the deliverer. He saves. Yahweh Shai saves. That's what he's about to do, to pass over his elect. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. You hear that? The mercy we shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. Because in the midst of Third World War, our King, Yahweh Shai, is going to show up. 
before America is totally destroyed. The elect have to be what? Redeemed. That's how close we are. That's how close we are. That's how close we are. We say Barakata Yahawa. Bahashem Yahushai. Bahashem Kakutash. Let me see here. Where is it? Uh, that's not the one I was looking for. I thought I had it up. Uh, where was it? Please bear with me. Hmm. That's right here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and may no account of his labors. That's right. That's what we are doing right now. Standing in great boldness, declaring the name of our power. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. We build this kingdom for these nations. They had free labors for generation upon generation, seven different captivities. And here we are in the last captivity. And we are standing in great boldness, declaring the name of our Lord as we are about to witness the end of this kingdom through nuclear war. Eh? It says when they see it, who see it? The nations particularly Esau, Edom. Don't get distracted about Trump being convicted. Family, it is what? That's right. It is a distraction. Nuclear war is about to start. Are you talking about Trump being convicted of all types of these stupid charges? Family, is a distraction. But you know, the men of the Lord, you can fool us. You cannot, you cannot fool the men of the Lord. Our focus is on Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. It says, if it's at all possible, what? The lost elect will be deceived, but the lost elect will not be deceived. The Lord said that. They will not be, what? Deceived. We know Esau's plans. In order to bring the new system, they have to collapse what? the old system. That's why they make a mockery out of what? The justice system. All the wickedness that some of these politicians have done, and you telling me some hush money? And finally, it is all a distraction. They, because what? In order to bring in the new system, the old one has to be collapsed. The technocracy that they are pushing, the new world order, involving you taking a microchip, that's right. This old one has to be collapsed. Don't get distracted. For focus on the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That's right. Let your eye be single. This is not our kingdom. We could care less. Eh? Who wins an election? No. He said, for here we have no continuous city, but we seek one to come. Our city is what? The kingdom of heaven. We want to go back to Jerusalem. And that's where the Lord, Yahweh, is going to take us through his only begotten son. Count yourself blessed. He says, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And that's right. And they know that the word that we are speaking through the spirit of, and power of our king, the redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, is coming to pass and they are afraid and there's nothing they can do about it they are desperate oh yeah they are desperate because what their kingdom is about to end through nuclear war I said they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation that's right our salvation that's what it's all about the Israelite the 12th tribe the so-called Negroes Latinos, African Americans, Native Americans, there are an elect among the group, the 12th tribe, an elect. They were picked before the foundation to be what? The foundation of this earth to be beamed up into what? The ships, and all eyes shall see it. Yahweh shall come in first, get in his glory, and he's going to what? That's right, bring us glory. First, we are pushing the name of our power, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Those are the focal point of what? Our faith. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. That's why we keep saying the event that are about to take place on this planet here has never ever happened before. To what the same so-called Negro, Latino, nobody cares about. That's why the bottom of what every society to be beamed up, the lost elect family, the strangeness is going to be strange to them. That's right. Of what? Our salvation. That is why, family, 
I got a bit emotional this morning. But I said, Tawada Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. For this truth, man. And for this truth. It says, And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of war, of, of, of a reproach. Let me read that again. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. That's right. Niggas, spooks, you know, all type of different names that they call us. And we are three-fifths of what? A person. That's right. We are nobody. We are void of light. We are savages. We are evil. That's right. And they groan and they're going to say, come on. These people can be what? The children of the Lord. No, they cannot be. It's, it's impossible. But yeah, that's how the Lord operates. He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek, the lonely, the poor shall inherit the earth. That's right. And you go back and look for the definition of those words. That's right. The ones that nobody cares about. Eh? They may be what? Poor, but they are rich in faith. It says, we fools are counted his life madness. They see you preaching this word here. Yeah, they never, they're going to think you've lost your mind. How dare you? Multipolar world is being formed. And you're telling me that, oh, uh, somebody called uh, Yahweh Shai is coming to uh, destroy these nations and kill them and, 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 and then take over the kingdom. Yeah, well, that's exactly how what we are seeing. And it's going to manifest. Yahweh Ratazah, the Lord is not going to disappoint us. You may not believe it, but it's okay. You don't have to believe it. That's what Apostle Paul said it best. In Romans 3, 3, he says, What if some don't believe? Should their own belief make the word of the Lord non effect? He says, The Most High forbid. Roughly paraphrasing. And the Lord said, Don't let the incredulity of, of those that, uh, let me get it. I don't want to butcher it. And he said, Don't let it trouble you. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Let me go here. Second Ezra 15. It says here, it says here, fear not the imagination. Second Ezra 15, 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. That speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in the unfaithfulness. So we don't really care, right? We could care less whether you believe it or not. Because that prophecy has to be fulfilled. Because all the unfaithful have to die in their unfaithfulness. So it is okay. We're not pushing this eh, in your truth. Uh -uh. We are giving it to the elect. We do these lessons for the elect. It says, we fools are counted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the power and his lot is among the saints? That's right. The saints, his lot is among the saints. That's the elect. That's what's about to happen upon this planet Earth. And family, we're going to get right into it. And we say, Barakata Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukakudash. We thank the Lord Yahweh. We're going to open it up here. Yeah, so much is happening. And family, and this is what brings joy to our heart. That's, this is these type of news bring a lot of joy to our heart because it's leading to the second coming of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. We don't care if people don't believe it, we believe it. And we're going to die believing it. That is our faith. We're going to die believing this word here. That's right. That's right. It says here. One second. Please bear with me. It says here. This is pro news reporting. Medvedev, those of you who don't know Medvedev, there might be new listeners on this television. Oh, sorry, sorry, on this television. Please forgive me. On, the, uh, on this forum. That's why Medvedev used to be the former prime minister of Russia and also president of Russia. And, but now he's the security, he's the chairman of the security, something to that. I can't remember his latest title because uh, I know Putin just won the election. I don't know whether they switched his title, but we're going to find out. Listen to this. It says here, but long story, if you want to know him, do a little bit of research on him. All right, but let's get the news. It's a Medvedev for America. 
permission to attack Russian territory, the escalation will end in the final stage. Okay, what's the final stage? That's why nuclear missile hitting America. That's what the Lord says in the book of Joel. Okay, the final stage, this is what he's talking about. Ezekiel 38, Jeremiah 51, Isaiah 13. That's what he's talking about, the final stage. That's all written in the Bible. Okay, it says here, the escalation will end in the final stage, nuclear war. We know that the long-range weapon systems are operated by NATO soldiers. If those of you who don't know what NATO is, it's North Atlantic Treaty Organization, okay? Comprised of uh, the 32 members currently, all right? Sweden and Finland were the last countries to join. All right, let's continue. It says the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, commenting in an exist extensive telegram post, on the approval officially given by Washington. Biden came out and said, yep, yeah, it is okay. It's, it's, we are good to go. We're going to be striking Russia. Okay? And keep in mind, Russia have the most, uh, 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 what is it called? Nuclear missiles. Okay, Russia, another world power, has the most nuclear missile. What does that tell you? The Lord says what? He's going to harden Pharaoh's heart, right? Modern day Pharaoh is what? Esau Edom, the Edomite. That's right. The last leg of the Roman Empire is about to be go up in flame. That's what was about to take place on this planet here. It says here, the former Russia president Dmitry Medvedev commenting in an extensive telegram post on the approval officially given by Washington to Kiev, Kiev to hit Russian territory with American weapons, said that the escalation is growing and will inevitably end up in the final stage, which is nuclear war. A bleak and dark prospect, that means the door to the madhouse will open, and when it does, it will never close again. That's right. The Lord said, the place that are coming eh, are not slab, and they shall not return. Is it? Uh, let me see if I can get it. I think it's, uh, is it? Same? Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Uh, is it Second Ezra? I think it's Second Ezra nine. Uh, I think it's Second Ezra nine. Let's go to Second Ezra nine quickly. Please bear with me. Uh, I can't remember. It's fifteen. Please bear with me. I'm going to try my phone here. Let me put in a keyword here. I can't remember. Second Ezra 16.6. It says here. The plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood. That's right. Or may any one quench the fire in the stubble when it hath begun to burn. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the place, and who is he that can drive them away? So when he said that, that's what triggered this priest. It says here, Let's go back to what he says. It says, a bleak and dark prospect. That means the door to the madhouse will open. And when it does, it will never close again. You hear that? 
So when the Lord sends the plagues, when those missiles start a family coming out, out of the silos, it's not going to return back. No. The Lord's will will be done. And that's what is coming. Let's read on. He also said that Moscow knows that all long-range weapon systems are operated by NATO soldiers. Obviously, he also meant so he also means that attackums tactical ballistic missiles with which the Ukrainians have carried out significant strikes in the last period of time. He said he even added that Moscow is not bluffing when it says it will strike with nuclear weapons the countries, listen to this, the countries that help Ukraine either with weapon system or by sending troops to Ukraine soil. He meaningfully added that European countries have a high population density unlike Russia and are therefore much more vulnerable to nuclear strike. Western countries that allegedly approve the use of their long-range weapons on Russia territory regardless of whether we are talking about old or new territories of our country must clearly understand the following. All their military equipment and advisors fighting against us will be destroyed, both on the territory of Ukraine and on the territory of other countries. That's why it's called Third World War. If attacks on Russia territory are carried out from there, Russia knows that all long-range weapons used by Ukraine are controlled by military personnel of NATO countries. This is not military aid at all, but participation in a war against us and such actions of theirs eh, may well become casus belli, meaning belligerent in this war. And eh? that's what it means, casus belli. Eh? Take it, let's go. What is it? Siri? Let me see here. Uh-huh. What is casus belli? A nation is deemed a belligerent even when resorting to war in order to withstand or punish an aggressor. Are you listening to this? That's what it means. Hey, eh? where was I? Where was I? I missed it. What is, it says here. Uh, it says here. NATO should what? NATO should decide how to characterize the sequences of what possible retali retaliation on equipment, facilities, military personnel of individual alliance countries. That's what is coming. That's what is coming, family. Yeah. That's warning. Russia don't bluff. The final, again, the escalation will end in the final stage, nuclear war. And that's what we are looking forward to. That's what we are looking forward to. Let's go here. Let's bring 2nd Ezra. A quick precept there. 2nd Ezra, we're here to comfort the elect. Listen to the 2nd Ezra, verse 9. It says here, 2nd Ezra chapter 9. Let's go here. Verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. That's what Apostle uh, Paul wrote in the book of, I believe, it's, uh, is this 1st Corinthians? No, I think it's 1st uh, Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, he doesn't need to write unto you. You should know the time that we are living in. Eh? It says, first Thessalonians, let me go there quickly. Please bear with me. Uh, let's open up another, wind another uh, window here. It says, uh, I think it's first Thessalonians, not that's Timothy. First Thessalonians 5, 1, is it 1? Yeah, but the times, that's what Apostle Paul said to you. And eh? he said, the day of the Lord. So this is leading to the day of the Lord. So for the elect, you should know by what? Measuring the time diligently, right? Like it says, Second Ezra 9, 1, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, the signs are what? The prophecies. And we know that what? According to Revelation, this is the last war leading to the second coming of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. So you should know the time that we are in. And he said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then when, then what? It's a verse two. It says here, 
then shall thou understand that it is the very same time where in the highest then yeah, will begin to visit the world which he made through what by bringing these wars these prophecies to pass civil war is coming microchip is coming chaos is coming these are how this is how the lord is about to visit the earth leading to the second coming of our king our redeemer yahweh shai so now that's what apostle paul is reminding us here the day of the lord it says but of the times and season brethren eh, ye have no need that i write unto you you don't need you, know, you don't need us to continue to you should know by what by measuring the time diligently eh? For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord and so cometh as a thief in the night. For you, it shouldn't come as a thief in the night because you are a watchman. You're watching. Only becomes a thief when they steal. A thief, or when they, they steal something, then that's right. That's a thief. He took it. You are a thief. But from if you are watching, no, you're not going to be, your house is not going to be invaded. No, you're watching. You are the smart world. The, uh, we have five wise virgins and we have five foolish virgins. You are the, the wise virgin. Eh? The wise virgin, you have your oil, which is this word. It's in you. Eh? You have the faith to believe in the testimony of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. You were programmed from before the foundation of the earth to receive this message and be sealed and be what? Delivered. Eh? Hmm? It said, For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord, so coming as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and safety, which is what? That's why right. it's coming. Eventually, it's going to come in the form of a microchip. Eh? Karagma, peace and safety. Then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape it. But you uh -uh, are not in darkness. We're going to live there, and we're going to bring the next article. Mm -hmm. It said, Germany said yes to Ukraine to use its weapon against Russian targets. It's official. You see, the, the worst family, they, they, they're speaking with the same one voice. Because remember, it's all boils down to American dollar. American dollar. America collapsed. The whole Western world is finished. So they all have to participate in this world here. That's how the Lord set it up. So they're going to fight for it. They cannot stand back and watch uh, Russia, China, the BRICS system walk away from the dollar and form their own, uh, their own financial system. No. America, the Roman Empire, wants to be the sole superpower. And Russia, the time has come because they forgot, they forgot the, 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 the pre, uh, what's it called? The Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel 7. It is the Lord that sets these kingdoms up. But Esau, Edom, is about to lose his birthright again. Eh? That's why he's about to lose his kingdom. So he's going to go, family. That's why the Bible says in Revelation 12, 12, that the devil knows that what? he has but a short time. So he is coming down with great wrath. He's desperate right now. He, if he can rule, he's going to burn the whole house down, family. If he can take possession of the house, uh -uh, nobody can live in the house. That's why. You can't reason with Esau, Edom, self-proclaimed white man. No. He's playing his role to perfection. Russia, the breaks, China, nobody's going to rule after America falls. No, it is Yahweh Shai's kingdom. And the coal, that's right. That's right. Yahweh Shai is going to share his kingdom with his what? His people, the Israelites. That's what is coming. He said, we are jointly convinced that Ukraine has, under international law, the right to defend itself against these attacks, the country's government spokesman said. So it's official. Germany has given the go-ahead. And we know, Second World War, we know what Russia did to Germany. But family, that's right. Not, there's nothing new under the sun. That's right. Napoleon went against Russia. Napoleon lost. This is the last. That's right. Germany, uh, Adolf Hitler tried it. He lost against Russia. Family, so the result is going to be the same because according to what? Uh, let me go here quickly. Let me bring this out. I am not going to read it. Isaiah 13, I love the headline here. You see, we continue to bring it out. Isaiah 13, to give honor and glory to the Lord. Isaiah 13, and it said prophesy about Babylon, right? Which is America. And then when you go down to 17, come on. That's, you go down to 17, it says what? Babylon will what? fall to the knees. What does fall mean? That's why it's going to be taken. By what? Russia. America is going to be taken by Russia. We have that precept. We're going to get there slowly. Babylon will fall to the meat. That's Russia. 
and Babylon at the end of the verse, it tells you that America is going to be a place prepared for animal. America is going to be a vast desert. That is what is coming. That is why, family, you thank the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, if you actually believe in this message. And it says here, the die has been cast. War News 24-7 report. It said the die has been cast. The Russians have issued a nuclear map for Europe. They are targeting all NATO bases on European soil. Between Greece and Turkey, taking nuclear deterrence measures by Moscow. This, this, this is the map that they've had. That's right. This, this countries, these are NATO member country, Belgium, Germany, France. They all possess as well, nuclear missiles. Turkey is a member of NATO. They also possess what? Nuclear missile, which is owned by America. But we know that eventually Turkey is going to leave the alliance. It is coming. That time is fast. That time is fast approaching because according to we go by what is written in the Bible, Ezekiel 38, Turkey will be under Russia's guard. That's right. Turkey is going to join Russia. Turkey is going to leave NATO. It's just a matter of time. And so as we see, let's see, let me see if we can read a bit here. Maybe the first, it says here, against the background of the attacks on the strategic early warning radars of nuclear attack in the depth of Russia. That's right. This, this, this radar was supposed to tell Russia if intercontinental ballistic missiles are coming, uh, coming into Russia. The early detection, but guess what? NATO just shot it down. They shot two of them down. What does that tell you, family? America is preparing to use nuclear missiles against Russia. Because why would you take uh, the eye? That's something, that family, that, that, that is literally the eye of Russia. You just took it out. So right now they are walking blind. You only do that if you are preparing to launch attacks against Russia. But we know, according to what the Lord says, Russia will prevail. Russia will take down the last leg of the Roman Empire, which is Babylon the Great, eh? America. You see, it says, against the background of the attacks on the strategic early warning radars of nuclear attack in the depth of Russia, the Russian issue not by chance a nuclear map of Europe in which they also put Greece. Yeah. The one thing about the Russians, they don't, they don't bluff. They don't bluff. Yeah, it's all nuclear, nuclear, nuclear war. It's all Armageddon. Eh? The last war. Mentioned in the book of Revelation. And eh? Joel, this is it, family. The last war to end all war. Full speed to nuclear Armageddon. The U.S. will launch missiles at Russia from the territory of Ukraine. And Russia will hit Poland, Germany, and Greece. Biden authorized the use of American weapons against Russia. Moscow, they should be careful what they do. Yeah, this is what it's going to look like. It's called mushroom cloud. That's right. That's what, this is what is coming upon the earth. Don't get distracted by Trump. You see, this, this, this happened yesterday. Everybody's talking about attacking Russia. And all of a sudden, they throw you Trump, telling you that Trump was convicted of 34 felonies. Fine, who cares? Who cares? That's Esau. Those distractions don't fool the men of the Lord. Family, let's our, uh, let, uh, let's, uh, let, let your eye be single. Focus on prophecy, man. It's all part of this whole thing. But Esau thinks he's in control. He's not in control. He's not in control at all. Because they want this thing to us. They'll start up the civil war. Oh, no, it's still the civil war is coming on the Lord's term. The Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, is going to be on his term. How it's going to play out. You see, that's why it's better to fear the Lord. Do the best that you can in this vessel that we have. We know we're not going to get it perfect on this end. But we are doing our damn best. So that when Yahweh Shai shows up, you know what? He will have mercy upon us. Mm -hmm. It's all about family. It's all about getting that ticket to the seat, man. Getting that ticket to the biggest event in the history of mankind. The crowning of the Lord. I mean, the, let's say Yahweh Shai. First, the Yahweh Shai is getting his glory. That's right. Elevating the name of our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. And being part of what? That's right. That feast. The, mar the marriage supper of the Lamb. You see? We want to be part of it. The biggest event in the hi history of mankind. And you want to be part of it. 
Pressure on U.S. President Joe Biden to allow Ukraine to use Western supply weapons to attack Russia territory appears to be paying off as it is revealed that he has gradually given permission for their use. Man, this is like, this is like music to our ears, man. You know, this is what we're waiting for, family. We're waiting for this. All right. Dmitry, this is from RT. Dmitry Soslov, it's time for Russia to think about a demonstrative nuclear test. You see, everybody's talking. Dmitry Soslov is not any, uh, any regular person. Let me read you his, uh, his, his title. He's a member of Russia Council on Foreign and Defense Policy. Deputy Director of World Economy and International Politics at Moscow High School of Economics and Valde Club Espet. <coughs> these are high institutions, okay? They are, they are the, these are the ones advising Putin. Vlad, President Vladimir Putin. So, family, we say, Barakata Yahawa, Bahashem Yahushai. Because what? Our salvation drawn. I have a video cut this morning from uh, the Canadian prepper. Please, uh, I'm going to be playing it very shortly. Uh, let me see here. Uh, did I miss something here? So I wanted to bring this out. The U.S. is dangerously militarizing the Baltic. What is happening to the island of Gotland? What is the story surrounding the Swedish island of Gotland? Because what? You have to surround what? Russia. That's what it's all about. And Russia have made it clear. Russia Foreign Intelligence Service warned on Thursday that top Swedish military officials were stoking anti-Russia hysteria. It said by trying to convince Swedes that Moscow has its eye on the Swedish island of Gotland, which is seen as key to control of the Baltic Sea. That's what America does. That's what Esau Edom and self-proclaimed white man. That's right. In order for him to rule for me, it's chaos upon chaos. That's how he ruled best. That's why they gave you democracy. They gave you two-party system. So you're busy fighting each other, but you forgot that they both speak with one voice. Eh? Oh, the Democrats are this. Oh, the Republicans are this. Oh, I like the Republicans. Oh, this. No, family, they're all the same devil. There's no difference. They speak as a dragon. Eh? They come as a lamb. Family, that's why the same two filthy, uh, the same uh, the wing on the same filthy bird. That's why. They give you, they give, they make it appear as if you have an option. No, family. And we thank the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, their family. We didn't fall for the okie do. Eh? But let's go on. Let's bring out this Canadian prepper update today. Eh? Let me bring out here, split this view here. Give me my Bible. That's right. Okay, so now let's allow fair use art, fair use art. Just a quick update from the Canadian prepper. All right, and uh, he too, he's going to mention some of the stuff that I already mentioned, but uh, sometimes it's just nice to hear his perspective. All right, so beloved, when it's all said and done, I hope you are edified. We thank the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, again, for what he has done for us in the land of our captivity. We thought we were supposed to be here, you know, work for Esau, Edom, and grow old and retire and die. But family, that wasn't the case. The Lord opened our eyes. Like he says in the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30, he says, In the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves and call upon my name and, and, and meditate on my name. Let's go back there. Man, I brought this out on my live stream yesterday. Family, I went live yesterday for the first time. Eh? But anyways, you know, hopefully I can be doing more of that, Lord willing. But uh, let's do this. Let's go to Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. Okay, Baruch 2, 30. Um, let's go here. It says here, for I knew, eh? listen to this, for I knew that they will not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, everywhere we are, whether it's in Jamaica, whether it's in America, whether it's in Barbados, eh? whether it's in Congo, whether it's in Sweden, eh? uh, whatever under the sun, it doesn't matter where we are, we are in the land of our captivity. Until we are under the umbrella of Yahweh Shai, Back in, back in Jerusalem, family, we are not home yet. Jerusalem, that's right. That's right. That's where we want to go. A city of peace. That's when we're going to find finally receive our rest. Eh? It's a we shall what? In the, in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves and do what? And, and shall know that I am the Lord, their power. For I will give them a heart, which is your mind and ears to hear. That's right. Only the elect are going to be hearing what the Lord is saying. 
because they were programmed before the foundation of this earth to receive this message and be sealed and be delivered and be the first fruit in the kingdom. And you see, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And that's what we are doing right now, thinking upon the name of our Lord, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's get in. Uh, this is Fair Yusa, Fair Yusa, Canadian prepper. Let's allow him to speak. A world war, pick your pick. That's why I'm out here in a tractor at dusk in a rainstorm tilling the land because it's go time. Russia is going to drop a nuke very soon. I don't know where they're going to do it, but they're going to have no other choice. The decision has been made. It's going to happen. This diversionary fiasco that people are transfixed on right now in the United States, as pertinent as it might be to domestic issues, even though I still think it's, it's largely just theater, away from uh, all the other goings-on geopolitically around the world, and while it is an unprecedented event unto itself, uh, in a series of unprecedented events that have characterized the modern day, I still think the bigger story today was the one that was completely covered up by what happened with Trump. And that is that, according to Politico, Biden has already secretly greenlit Ukraine to launch long-range strikes into Russia. Okay? Now, this is exactly what I said yesterday. I, I told you guys that this ambiguity that they were fronting as is completely meaningless. And the fact that this was a secret that was uh, permitted a couple weeks ago tells you that there are more secrets right now, and as there should be. I mean, we've gotten accustomed to being given the play-by-play, -play, which is completely idiotic to broadcast what your plans are going to be. I mean, that's in defiance to some of the core tenets of the art of war. Yet, our leaders are telegraphing their moves in slow motion for our adversaries, it seems. But we know there's a lot of secrets. And as there should be, this is war. The question is, what other secrets? And of course, those secrets are now going to be, most certainly, in the direction of escalation. People do not realize how important and how significant it is. I want you to really wrap your head around this. Not only have all the European countries in unison, essentially within the span of a few days, basically agreed to allow Ukraine to target deep inside Russia, okay? And the, this is with weapon systems that they've all pledged. So this is not just based on what they already have. This is based on what they're going to be getting, including F-16s, which is why a very well-respected uh, Political scientist named Sergei Markov thinks that the Russians are going to drop a tactical nuke in early June. Now, people need to really put this in perspective. You have the United States of America, the second largest nuclear power on Earth, green lighting Ukraine to use the weapons that it provides to attack Russia, and not just close to the Kharkov region. That's what they're saying. That's how they kind of walked it back a little bit. They said, oh, well, actually, we just meant in and around the Kharkov region with uh, counter battery fire. Uh, we're not referring to the attackums and blah, blah, blah. And we know that that's just bullshit. The Russians are already saying that it's bullshit. Regardless, we've talked about this ad nauseum, that even if they're not allowing the Ukrainians to utilize attackums, if the Ukrainians are targeting deep inside Russian territory with these drones that they claim to have made, that's pretty much essentially the same thing as the Americans targeting Russia with those drones. Even the Americans are going to pretend, oh, we didn't know you were targeting those nuclear radars. Uh, we don't advise uh, that you do that. And it, it's all bullshit. It is 100% bullshit. These guys think Russia is bluffing. And I can tell you right now, that Russia is about to drop a nuke. 
somewhere. And the reason why I know this is because, or the reason why I can make a a very high probability inference about this situation is because I pay a lot of attention to Russian media. I study it. And what I can tell you is that what once was a story and a hypothetical doctrine that was proposed by the fringes of the Russian uh, political science class has now become not only mainstream, but front page mainstream. Anything that you see on Russia today is largely top down in the sense that they're not going to say anything that is going to rock the boat. I am sure, certain that there are some media czars in Russia that oversee and, and provide the final say on what uh, Margarita S Simonian is allowed to publish on RT. And on RT, for the last couple days, the headline story has been this policy of escalate to de-escalate, doing a demonstrative strike to snap the West out of their delusional hypnotic state and in an attempt to scare people. And I want you to just imagine that you wake up to the news that Russia has detonated a nuclear weapon. I just want you to play that tape through and imagine the panic, okay? I want you to seriously imagine the headline. I want you to imagine when that picture, because someone's going to get a picture of it. There's going to be a picture of it, and it's going to be an iconic one. When it happens, it's going to scare the shit out of people. And what this might in fact do, and this is why it's so likely that it's going to happen, because it might in fact work to de-escalate. This might create an anti-war movement, the likes of which we've never seen before. Right now, the anti-war crowd is pretty fixated on what's going on in Palestine, and for good reason. But that could quickly shift if a nuclear weapon is dropped. Watch how quickly that could shift. But only, of course, if the funding is there. Okay, Because we all know that there's a lot of shady uh, agencies and institutes who fund these protests. So if the funding is there, it's going to happen. But I do believe there's going to be a grassroots resistance to all of this that's going to ensue. The fact that Joe Biden has given Kiev permission to use weapons to hit targets in the part of Russia bordering Ukraine's Kharkov region is very serious. They say, however, Biden has for now maintained the ban on strikes deeper into Russian territory. However, however, there is rumors that an official indicated that Biden has secretly permitted this. Biden. I say Biden with quotes. For lack of better terminology, I'm going to call it the deep state. But I don't like the political associations. And as you probably gathered today, I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about Trump. Um, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, people are saying it's going to lead to civil war. Maybe. But quite frankly, I think people are very lazy and selfish nowadays. I'm sure there's going to be some unhinged people who do some unhinged things. And there's going to be some standoffs. There's going to be some very upset people. But the bigger geopolitical picture here, we're talking about the dollar. We're talking about nuclear war. We're talking about the current trade war with China that has just ramped up today. I'll talk about that in just a moment. These are much bigger issues. And I know people think that the executive branch of the government is really who's in charge here. But I, I hate to inform you that there are so many people around the CEO that I don't think it doesn't matter who you put in there. This situation has to play, it out, play itself out. And there ain't no way Trump is ending this war in 24 hours like he claims. In fact... Trump was uh, recorded as saying, if I'm not mistaken, something to the effect of, if I was president and Russia invaded Ukraine or China invaded Taiwan, I would bomb Moscow and Beijing. Okay? 
Now, that could have just been bluster. Yeah, so, like I said, through the spirit and power of our king, the Redeemer of Israel, I was sure during this lesson, there's, there's no difference between the two parties, okay? There's no difference between the two parties. You know, they are all doing their, you know, your, your president, your governors, everybody was picked. Nobody was elected. They put in place, you know, to fool the masses all the time. You know what I mean? The elite are the one pulling the strings. Okay. Trump, the all puppets in this whole, this big game. They call it politics is just a game. But we thank the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rekakodash, for giving us the understanding, bringing our leaders, our head apostles, the bishop, the elders, to teach us this glorious gospel and to find it. So for us to be depart from this world here, you know what I mean? To not be not participating in the election and following this nation, family, the world, this is not our kingdom. That's why Yahweh shall give the instruction to the apostles. Go teach. Go to the lordship of the house of Israel. Go teach them. Tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That is our kingdom. This is not our kingdom. Job 9.24 tells us why. This place here, the current system that we are living in is given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked, that's right, supposed to do wickedly until the Lord removes him. Esau Edom supposed to turn this whole place upside down. That's why there's confusion everywhere. That's why you can tell the difference between a boy and a girl. That's why women are above men. You see? It's just a, a whole bunch of confusion. Eh? Grown men with a skirt and a dress on and eh? high heels and eh? reading storybooks to uh, your children. Eh? That's why women, wearing women clothes, that's why this is the place of confusion. And because what? It is the wicked kingdom. That's why the Lord said, don't participate in it. Don't love this place here. It's as if you love this place here, the love of the Lord is not in you. But let's go on. Let's finish here. Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. That's what we're doing right now. You see, letting you, the elect, okay, Israel, take heed. The king is coming. Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is not coming to sit around the table and say, okay, Putin, you're going to take the northeast. Oh, Biden, how about we, Biden, you tell, no, Yahweh Shai says what? The sin shall take the kingdom. He's going to take, he's not going to negotiate. We are the one, we are the mouthpiece. But when he shows up, like it says in the book of um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and eh, I believe it's verse 7, he's going to, it's the brightness of, let me go there, let me go there. What am I, why am I trying to quote, uh, quote it? He's, the, 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 we, we are destroying first Esau with our mouth, okay? And then when the, the Lord shows up, he's bringing the fire. That's Yahweh Shai, that's it. Yahweh Shai is not coming, okay? Is it 2 Thessalonians? I think, I think it's verse 2, uh, 2 Thessalonians. No, what am I doing here? Please bear with me. I don't know what happened there. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 7, I believe. It's 7 or 8. Second Thessalonians. It says here, yeah. It says, for the mystery of iniquity does already work. That's what you're looking at right now. Esau is doing exactly what the Lord asked him to do. Eh? Only he who now let it, who is our power, Yahweh Ba'ashem, eh? will let unto why? He be taken out of the way. And who is coming to take him out of the way? Yahweh Shai. He said, and then shall that wicked be revealed. He's been revealed right in front of you. That's Esau Edom. The one dropping bombs, family dropping bombs on, oh, what do I, on, on a refugee camp. A refugee, you go to a refugee camp for, for protection. But Esau don't care because the Lord is the one allowing him to. He says, and that wicked, and then, that, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord, Yahweh, Shy shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What's the spirit of the Lord's mouth? The elect, the men of the Lord. That's what we are doing right now. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When Yahweh Shai shows up with the missile, that is how Esau is going to go down. He said, blow ye the trumpet in, the, in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord Yahweh cometh. For it is nigh at hand. That's where everything is leading to. That is why, family, when we come across this news here, we are extremely glad, extremely happy because we know that our captivity is almost over. We are about to go home. Eh? It says a day of darkness and of gloominess. Eh? A day of clouds and of thick darkness. 
That's what is coming. That's the day of the Lord. Zephaniah also reminded of the same thing. Eh? The Lord's day is not going to be sunny and, and people walking around holding flowers and eating cucumbers and grapes and strawberries eh? in their summer clothes. And eh? no, it is going to be very dark. There are going to be earthquakes and there are going to be tsunamis and eh? chaos everywhere. Because when the shy shows up, everybody will see it. Because all of a sudden, the sky, the chariot, thousands and thousands of chariots, people getting, people, family experiencing heart attack. People are going to die immediately. Chaos, anxiety, family. People have no clue what is coming upon this earth here. And we are telling you before it happens. So our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, will get all the glory. He says, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it even, to the years of many generations. Because this is the end. Think about it. The power Yahweh is about to introduce his son, his only begotten son to the, the whole world. You think, you gotta, you gotta, you can't even wrap your head around it. It's not going to be any regular day that just got, you know, you wake up today, you do whatever your routine, you go to work. No, no, no. It's going to be an event like never before. That's right. Forget all these major events in the world that people write about. They write history. They write about in many, many books. No, 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 no. This one here, you can multiply it. It's going to be like me 20 billion times. This is what is about to happen here. Oh, yeah. The, big, the intro, 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 introduction of our king, the redeemer of Israel, to the entire world. Oh, yeah, family. We can't wait, man. We can't wait. Joel 2, 3. A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame. Do, the Lord is talking about the missiles. That's right. The Lord is describing the missile right now. This is the missile the Lord is... The, a fire devoured before it, because it tells you in the book of uh, Isaiah 9, 5. This particular war, the Third World War, is going to be fought with a nuclear fire. It's a, it's nuclear war, but the Lord says what? It's going to be a fire and flame. Read it. Daniel, I'm not going to go there. No, Daniel. Isaiah 9, verse 5. And it says, A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burned. The land is as the Garden of Eden. That's right. Before this missile hit, oh, the land is beautiful. That's what the Lord is basically saying. Before the missile hit America, everybody, you know, they have the, you know, manicure lawns and everybody holding hands and, you know, doing their thing. That's right. It's the Garden of Eden. Let's continue. The land is the Garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate, a desolation, sorry, a desolate wilderness. When the missile go through, that's what's going to happen. Because we just told you in the book of Isaiah 13, mm, the last verse. It tells you America is going to be a desert. It's going to be what? A land where what? Animals are going to be having, that's right, a good time on the soil of America. It's going to be a monument to, to tell this nation, this is what happened when you go against the Lord. It says here, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. You hear that? The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Power. That's right. And, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Those missiles, I think Russia has a missile that can hit America within less than 20 minutes. Or I think is it, they have a missile that can touch America. That's right. The, way, the east coast of America in less than 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Supersonic speed. Sound. That's right. That's Mark 10, Mark 12, I mean, whatever the numbers are. Oh, yeah. That's how quick these, these missiles are going to be moving towards America. And all the various places that they're going to be heading. And the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. You listen? Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains. You're going to hear it. Oh, yeah. And by then, family alarm is going to be going off. People are going to be so afraid. Oh, the missiles are coming. The missiles are coming. They're going to be sent you, sending you alert on your phones. It's not going to help. Only the elect are going to be delivered out of America. Think about it. All Israel, one third. Only one third are going to be delivered. Two thirds are going to be fuel for the fire. And we say, Barakata Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. 
That's the Lord's judgment. Like the noise of flame of fire that devoured the stubble as strong people set in battle array. And it says, before they are faced, the people shall be much pained. Family, that's why it says, Jeremiah 30 verse 7 tells you, you read from the beginning, yeah, particularly verse 6, it says, yeah, men, family, heart, it says, men, uh, let me go there, family, let me go there. I don't want to butcher it. Where is it? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go to the book of uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30. 37. It might be a new listener on this uh, channel. Jeremiah 37. Listen to what the Lord is saying. But let's pick. It says here. I'll do it. says here. It says here. Ask. What is it? Uh, yeah. Here. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with a with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. That's called stress. People hearing missiles coming to hit America. That's right. Nuclear missile. They haven't eaten in dead family. That, this is what the Lord is bringing. Hmm? That's why it says here, Alas, for that day is great, so that, that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he, Jacob, the elect, shall be saved out of it. The Lord is not going to save everybody. Only the elect. This says in the book of Daniel 12, 1, the one written in the book of life. They were programmed before the foundation of this earth to receive salvation. You can't make yourself an elect. They were given faith to believe the testimony of our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Let's continue. He said, before their face, their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. And they shall run like mighty men. What is that? That's right. That the Lord is describing what? The missiles. They shall climb the wall like men of war. The missiles, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. That's why the missile family, the Lord's gonna shoot thousands of thousands of missiles because all these nations from North Korea, China, um, uh, Russia, the global south, uh, Persia, Iran, family, all these nations now want a, they want a piece of America because America was able to go and destroy all these nations, but now the Lord is going to allow these nations, and that's why the Lord is balancing. He's going to allow them to what? Family, to destroy America. That is, this is what the Lord is describing. Let's read that again. Joel 2, 7. They shall run, the Lord is describing the missile, like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Are you hearing that? No, nothing is going to stop them. The America don't have any defense for Russia hypersonic missiles. Most nations don't have defense, that's right, to stop those missiles. That's right. That's why they're going to go through windows. He said, neither shall one trust another. You hear that? They shall walk everyone in his path. Talking about the missiles. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Nothing is going to stop them. No defense is going to destroy those missiles. That's right. That's what the Lord is just telling you right here. Eh? We are so happy that we are in this truth, family. And we pray the Spirit, the Lord will put the Spirit on all of us to continue to endure to the end, to make it to that marriage supper. Eh? He says here, they shall run to and fro. He said, they shall run to and fro in the city, the missiles, and they shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up, eh? they shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Meaning what? Uh-uh, you're not going to see them coming. Mm -hmm. They're going to break in America on war village. That's right. That's right. People live, you know, walking, you know, they have no care in the world. The world is about to be set on fire and they're distracting you with what? Trump being convicted. Who cares? He said, the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark because, yeah, that's the day of the door. It tells you from the beginning of this, uh, this chapter, a day of gloominess, darkness. That's what is coming. He said, the earth shall quake before them, earthquakes, tsunamis, eh? the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall wa, withdraw their shining. Because everybody got to see the Lord. That's it. If it's so bright, you can't really see. No, it's going to be dark. So when your Hawashai shows up, you're like, my goodness, that's the king of kings. 
the Lord of Lords. For me, he says here, and the Lord Yahweh, listen to this carefully, the Lord Yahweh shall utter his voice before his army. The armies are what? That's why the missiles, part of the Lord's army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord Yahweh is great and, and very terrible. Listen to this. For the day, in case somebody misses, for the day of the Lord Yahweh is great and very ter terrible. And who can abide it? Who can abide it? The, who can abide the day of the Lord? Only the elect. That's why I said, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Eh? Let me get it. Let me finish there. Woe unto you. What is it? I think it's Amos 5.18. Is it? I think it's Amos 5.18. Let's go there. Amos 5, 18. What does it say? Yeah, it says here, you desiring the day of the Lord. Listen, listen, that's why the Bible says, woe unto you. Okay, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is what? It's darkness and not light. Evil. That's what the, 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 the it says. It says it's like you running away from, isn't it? It says like you run, it says as if a man did flee from a lion. And a bear met him. Think about that scenario. Picture it in your head. You running away from a lion. Do you see the size of a lion? And then a bear met you. That's the, how the day of the Lord is going to be. It's going to be very, very terrible. A bear met and all went into a house. When you think you got away from the bear, you lean his hand on the wall and the serpent bit him. That means there's nowhere to hide. That's the day of the Lord. And that's what is coming upon this earth. To end this wicked kingdom. And we can't wait. So beloved, I will leave it there. I hope you were edified. Again, things are happening. And we say, Barakata Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakodash. We thank the Lord for everything that he has done for us. In, our, in the land of our captivity. As we prepare to welcome our king, the second coming of our king, the redeemer of Israel, our shire. I pray this message find you in perfect peace. Continue to stay prayed up. We're almost out of here, man. We got Ness, Yahweh Ratazah. All right? Shalom. Our praises again. Honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our heavenly father, and his only begotten son, our king, our redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.